Here in Sea Caucus, I bring an exclusive interview with New Jersey State Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto as we discuss a bill now introduced in the legislature regarding paid sick time for all workers in the state of New Jersey. Well, what um, the thought is, paid sick leave uh, is something that Jersey City actually has passed an, an ordinance and so has uh, Newark, the two largest cities in the state. Uh, other cities are trying to take up this initiative and the thought behind it is that workers in the state of New Jersey are not afforded the, you know, uh, the opportunity if they get sick to be able to have some sick time. And this applies to the private sector? This would, this would be for the private sector okay. and what it would be is that when you have somebody that's sick and if they have two options, either they go into work sick or they stay home and don't get paid. And if they stay home and don't get paid, it's very difficult for them to put food on their table. Uh, if they go to work sick, they actually can spread that illness to, to the rest of them. It doesn't create good morale. It doesn't create an efficient employee. So I think this is something we need to start looking at at a uniform way st uh, throughout the state so every worker in the state of New Jersey can benefit from this. So just to be clear, according to what the bill is indicating, businesses with fewer than 10 employees would have to let workers accumulate at least 40 hours of earned sick time, correct? Mm -hmm. And for larger companies, it would be 72 hours. Right. So, And the time could be used for either the worker's own health care or to take care of a family member. Right. There are critics in, in the state, whether it's colleagues in the legislature or just business owners that said, this might hinder certain companies because it might you know, hinder upon their ability to hire more because of this extra cost. What do you say to those critics that are um, yeah. advocating this? Well, a lot of companies already in the state of New Jersey are doing this. And that's why this the dialogue is going to get started. We're going to talk about it. And uh, again, Jersey City already has implemented it. Newark has implemented it. So they're the two largest municipalities in the state that they have over 250,000 residents each. And if when you look at that, that's about half a million residents. But we have 8.6 million residents in the state of New Jersey. Over 1.1 million residents do not have this afforded to them. So I think that businesses sometimes react uh, in a way that we have to work with them and seeing how we could do it. If other businesses are already doing it, we can see how they can they can compensate to be able to do this. And I think it's the right thing because like I said, especially when you talk about today illnesses and everything, you're trying to promote wellness. And if you bring somebody sick into your workplace, it can only just spread that illness and then it becomes a, a greater uh, problem to them. So I think we'll talk, we'll make sure, and we'll see what their thoughts are. And you know, and the, the dynamics of the bill may change. So right now, that's the parameters of the bill as it's written right now. That's why it'll have a committee process. I'm looking uh, to vet it through there and then hopefully bring it to the floor and then it'll make its rounds through the Senate and then hopefully get to the governor for him to sign. Mr. Speaker, uh, a colleague of yours in the Assembly, the Minority Leader John Bramnick uh, mm -hmm. from Union County, um, has gone on record in saying that, quote, this is the last thing that New Jersey and the economy needs here. And furthermore, he's uh, gone on to say that uh, if we're going to create jobs and grow the economy, we have to stop blocking the way with costly mandates. What I say, the first thing, is about a quality of life for the residents of the state of New Jersey. And with all due respect, and I like John very much, I said we have done so many incentives and so many um, breaks for businesses with the 2013 Opportunity Economic Act that we gave credits for the corporate business tax for companies to move into the state of New Jersey, for companies to be able to stay in the state of New Jersey. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars that we poured into that and to help businesses. So I think this is something, it's got to be a give and take. It cannot all be skewed one way. And the way he's talking about it, like you, it's not on the, so it, it, you need to look at both sides of the equation here. Mr. Speaker, do you think the governor will sign it ultimately if it gets to his desk? You know what? I think if we look at a bill that we can compromise and we can get to some middle ground with everybody, I think it's possible that he does. I hope that he does because I think that he talks about, you know, that everybody should have some shared sacrifice, especially to, during these bad economic times. So guess what? It's about time that the working poor and the middle class of the state of New Jersey has some something back to them because they have a lot of skin in the game here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Fernando Uribe coming to you from Sea Caucus. And as always, stay classy everyone.